Good day everybody, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. I hope this video finds you all doing well. This is going to be a quick update video on uh, something that has been discussed off and on throughout the years and even decades. And this uh, paper that has just been published kind of looks at uh, patients in multiple centers, and these are pretty large cohorts uh, of people. And the conclusions of this paper kind of go against what the the standard paradigm has been. And this is in reference to the correction of sodium levels in hyponatremia. And it, it's interesting that I'm talking about this because I actually just uh, completed a um, teaching a large block of instruction in a pathophysiology course uh, that I teach about once a year or so to mainly to allied health um, and paramedic students and we talk a little bit about this and essentially the the standard thinking has been and and still is for the most part uh, when we correct sodium too quickly uh, you typically uh, most people would agree that uh, greater than about eight milli equivalents uh, per liter per day so if we correct sodium faster than about eight milli equivalents in a 24-hour period that uh, can increase the risk of a problem occurring, uh, specifically something called osmotic demyelination syndrome. Essentially what it is, is it's a syndrome where uh, large numbers of neurons in the, in the central nervous system in the brain, and this can occur in specific areas of the brain, like the pons, for example, and we call that central pontine myelinolysis syndrome. Uh, but just a, 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 an umbrella, a large umbrella term is just osmotic demyelination syndrome. You just blow the myelin off of the large numbers of neurons, and this can result in a rather devastating neurological um, uh, injury and uh, may very well be irreversible. Now, historically, this has been rare, but again, the, the standard paradigm is, hey, if you correct sodium too quickly, and and um, some people even generalize that too, if you correct hypoosmolar situations, or hyperosmolar situations for that, that matter, too quickly, perhaps that might increase the risk of osmotic demyelination syndrome. And this particular paper uh, out of New England Journal of Medicine Evidence, uh, it is labeled Osmotic Demyelination Syndrome in Patients Hospitalized with Hyponatremia. I'll put a link in the description uh, so you can reference it. Uh, and when it actually looks at studies from multiple centers, the, the conclusions are interesting. So first, um, the guidelines of uh, correcting sodium slowly and limiting sodium correction to no more than about eight milli equivalents per liter per day is often violated. We often find that patients are corrected much faster that faster than that in a large number of cases. So overcorrection or overzealous uh, rapid correction occurs quite frequently. However, when we look at the actual cases of osmotic demyelination syndrome, they remain incredibly rare. Uh, less, uh, virtually all patients, 99% of patients who are even overcorrected, do not develop osmotic demyelination syndrome. So that begs the question, what really goes into osmotic demyelination syndrome? And are there perhaps other risk factors, other considerations, and um, what, how much is too much when it comes to the, um, the correction of hyper and hypoosmolar uh, situations in the setting of fluid and electrolyte anomalies? And um, I, would, I would say that there are a lot of unknowns, and this is actually kind of... Um, to me, this is a very obvious area that, that warrants uh, additional investigation. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of talk about this because it does really fly in the face of more conventional or more standard wisdom when it comes to addressing these situations, particularly hyponatremia. This is something that I was taught. This is something that I've heard for decades, and this is something that I have taught. However, I think it, this warrants some investigation and this warrants some discussion. And so I find this to be a very compelling uh, work, looks at a lot of different data, 
um, from a lot of different hospitals. So I think it's a pretty good data set that they're working with. And I think the conclusions um, are very compelling. Uh, so there you have it. Um, hopefully you all find this helpful and interesting or as helpful and interesting as I've uh, found looking at it. And um, I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.